quick, easy, 20 minutes, painless, um, done under a local anaesthetic, um, back to work within a few weeks and driving. So it was sold as a you know, better option than the, the operations they used to use. I mean, if you were told, oh, well, this could cause you for no, never to have sex for the rest of your life or die, would you agree to it? I don't think so. Surgical mesh can transform lives, but now there are claims that it can also ruin them. It's the most common form of pelvic prolapse surgery in the UK, and over 6,000 women come to hospitals like this one every year in order to have it done. But what happens when it goes wrong? Joanna Robertson had pelvic reconstructive surgery in 2003 after a difficult birth that left her incontinent. She told us how before that she was an active, healthy mother who trained for triathlons. Now this Derbyshire mother of three is in constant pain and relies on over 20 different types of medication. She's had to give up her job and relies on the help of her teenage children just to get by. The way I look now and the way I used to look are two completely different things. Um, I wouldn't be able to have a physical relationship. That's too painful. I can't, I can't even have um, a smear test at the doctors. I can honestly say if it wasn't for my children, I wouldn't still be here. <laughs> because they're the only thing that keep me going. And they are absolutely wonderful. They're fantastic. Polypropylene surgical mesh is used in cases of organ prolapse. This is when an organ moves away from where it's meant to be in the body. In pelvic prolapse, the bladder drops and pushes on the wall of the vagina, often causing incontinence. Over half of women who've given birth experience this problem. It's estimated that over 100,000 pelvic mesh operations have been carried out in the UK in the past 10 years. Julie received a vaginal mesh implant in 2004. She told us how she felt no one believed her health problems until septicemia nearly claimed her life several years later. A consultant told her that her problems were due to the mesh implant. The implant was removed in 2012 and Julie's health has since improved dramatically. It got so much better, obviously I'm not having the urine infections, um, no pain, you know, down, down below and, um, and it's been much better since the, the mesh has been, been removed, it's just, it's been brilliant. Were you shown the mesh before it was...? No, no, I, no, I wasn't, no. If you had seen it beforehand and, and known the implications, would you have gone through with the operation? Um, if I'd have known and seen it, no, I wouldn't have done. Kath Sampson is the founder of the Sling the Mesh campaign. She had her implant removed in 2014 and now aims to raise awareness and provide support for others who've been affected by these implants. And what happens, they put the, the hooks in through the vagina, it, support, it goes up under to support the bladder and then it comes up through the pubic bone. But if you just run your finger along the edge of that, um, but run it along the top. Wow, that, that is very sharp. That feels like the stuff you get bags of oranges in, the yeah. sort of mesh you get. Yeah, it's like cheese wiring in your insides, it's burning in your private parts, it's like someone has hit the back of your legs with, and you've got a really deep non-stop toothache, it's like someone has slashed your feet, punched your ankles. That is so intense, it's like a pain you've never ever felt before. Kath is not just a campaigner, she's become a supportive shoulder and so far she's had over 5,000 women contact her on social media. It's very hard to get across just how traumatic that is actually genuinely because every day you look at women who are joining the page uh, maybe for the first time and, and for the first time they're opening up about some really very embarrassing and personal subjects but they're also opening up about the depth of um, depression, pain, despair and shattered lives that they've been living some of them for years and to watch that woman join the page it's really hard. Campaigners like Kath are not the only ones worried about mesh. Experts are also concerned. At the end of last year, the National Institute for Health and Care Excellence concluded that transvaginal mesh should only be used for research purposes. It cited serious but well-recognised safety concerns. The device is, not, is incompatible with the body in lots of ways. It's, it's basically a piece of polypropylene plastic that doesn't want to be there and it gets harder, shrinks, 
gets at the edges can become really complicated in a way that it can become sharp and then it can erode into different areas of the body and so what you see is lots of complications emerge and we've got a huge problem now because we've got a system that's failing patients in terms of explaining to them the real evidence to inform use. So if there's concern in the medical profession, how worried should politicians be? One woman did explain to me that she had been severely incontinent. She felt she had no quality of life. She was unable to leave her house. And having the mesh actually transformed everything for her and gave her back some quality of life. And that is really good news for her. But we can't ignore the fact that there's a high proportion of women who this has been devastating for. So yes, in some cases it has been successful, but that doesn't counteract the number of people who have been debilitated by this. Women are now coming forward to sue the manufacturers for the alleged pain and distress caused by this mesh. We asked Johnson & Johnson, the manufacturers of Joanna's mesh, to comment on the claims. Despite repeated calls and emails, we received no response. Johnson & Johnson as a corporation is worth 80 billion. Um, I think they should pay for what they've done. One of the things we should be doing is following the example from New Zealand and actually banning this until we can prove it's safe. Women should not be used as guinea pigs to try something out and while we work out whether or not it's safe. The NHS has ordered a review into surgical mesh in 2019, but this is little comfort for people like Joanna. Yeah, I mean, what are, you, what are you hoping for in the long run? The first thing to get this out of me. Um, hopefully improve as much as I can. If they are going to offer mesh, um, they do need to um, advise that person there could be complications. And I understand there are women that have had no problems with that, but they do need to advise that there could be complications um, and make them aware of you know, how bad they can be.